Okay, well, welcome again, guys. This is uh, Tad the Blockbuster Guy. I'm uh, here for another video, another top 10 video. A top 10, as you may, because I don't know if there's, I think, well, he's almost at 10 movies. He's getting there. I was just watching Joe Rogan and uh, Quentin Tarantino. He was talking about his last movie. I think he's just going to get in producing. That's what I think he's doing. I think, because directing, I don't, I don't want to be a director. I want to be a producer. That's my, my goal is to hire people and let them do it because I've directed, I've had that stress. It is, it's not fun. It's not fun being a director, I'm telling you. It's very stressful for tear uh, stomach apart. But yeah, I'm gonna do my favorite Quentin Tarantino movies today on this fine Monday, fine smoky Monday here in Calgary, Alberta. The, this, I think we're still under uh, uh, air quality advisory, it's just terrible these forest fires but yeah number one my favorite quentin tarantino movie django unchained i got a funny story about this movie i uh i i watched it back when it first came out and i uh i watched half of it and then i paused it and i went and picked up some marijuana and I came back and i smoked a joint and, and then i finished watching it and I, that i finished it was i I remember uh, just spoilers, spoilers, just as Christoph Waltz's character killed DiCaprio, and I all hell broke loose. I was like, "Oh my God! Wow, this movie just shifted." That's a Tarantino kind of thing for you. Uh, it, it blew my mind. I was like, "Oh wow!" But up till then, I was still enthralled. It was just, uh, just after that, I was in a good state of mind watching it. Uh, I Christoph Waltz's performance is unbelievable. DiCaprio is fantastic in it. Like, if you watch some of the videos, he actually broke his hand when he slammed it down, and you can see it's all bloody. Jamie Foxx is fantastic. Sam Jackson's great in it. I just, I, I, I adore Django. I think it is, except for the fact that they dropped the end bomb way too many times. I tried watching it recently, and uh, I got roommates, and if anybody was hearing me watch this movie, they're like, what the hell is he watching? Why are they saying the N word so much? Honestly, I hate that word more than more than I just there's I hate the F word too is re referring to uh, like uh, like homosexual type of thing I hate that word too as well but the N word is my worst least favorite word and uh, just watching it I'm like wow I kind of got to turn this off I, I've seen it about four or five times it's a long movie but just uh, the amount of times they dropped the N bomb is a little much but honestly it's still just unbelievably good well acted, well directed, and well written. It's Tarantino. Moving on to number two, Reservoir Dogs, which is my number one for the longest time. I love this movie so much. Fucking dying here. Oh, fucking uh, Tim Roth, he, he's just amazing at it. Once again, spoilers, but like he's the undercover cop and he gets shot in the stomach during the, the heist and uh, Harvey Keitel is bringing him back and then they, they take a cop and all oh, that scene with us stuck is this stuck in the I think it is stuck in the middle with you stuck in the middle with uh, Mr. Blonde Michael Madsen excellent in it too uh, Steve Buscemi is like I don't tip I don't tip Mr. Pink uh, Steve Buscemi's great in it uh, it's just Reservoir Dogs is amazing and it's literally like one setting almost like shot in that warehouse and that's it and what well, like they've only done that a couple times to my recollection where it was really good then to come to mind is that Breaking Bad episode with the fly I just had to watch it recently because I was hearing a lot about it uh yeah Reservoir Dogs number one or number two edit edit okay Reservoir Dogs number two moving on to number three Pulp Fiction buddy jo Josh Wolf would say that Pulp Fiction is number one but it's my number three I really, 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 really enjoyed it, but it's, uh, he's got a couple others that are just above it. Uh, once again, the, the, the cast is amazing. Tarantino works with some crazy people. Like, it's nuts, actually, who he works with. John Travolta came back like, uh, you know, a hurricane. <laughs> Excuse me, just had a coffee. Uh, once again, Samuel Jackson, fantastic in it. Uh, Bruce Willis, Christopher Walken. <laughs> uh, that's him with Christopher Walken. Uh, oh, Chris Walken is amazing as well. 
It is amazing. Uh, who else is in that movie? There's a lot. I think Tim Roth is in that again, too, as well. You got Tarantino likes to rework re with people again. It's like uh, Scorsese and DiCaprio and De Niro. Uh, moving on. Speaking about De Niro, number four, Jackie Brown. This movie grew on me, actually. For the longest time, it was kind of at the lower end of my Quentin Tarantino movies. But uh, it's made, made its way to my, my fourth favorite of all time. Uh, it's got, once again, a crazy cast. Crazy cast. Sam Jackson again? Shock. Sure. Samuel Jackson's in a Quentin Tarantino movie. De Niro's in this one. Uh, once again, huge cast. The one guy passed away. I'm capping on his name. Maybe we should have looked it up. People in the comments, tell me who the, the one guy that died. I'm curious. Cause it's, uh, he was great in it, too. What is his name? He passed away about a, a year ago. I, I watched it, actually, after he passed away. I was like, yeah, I gotta watch uh, Jackie Brown again. Uh, Pam Greer, of course. But yeah, now moving on uh, to my number five, Inglorious Bastards. We kind of bored me at first. Uh, like, I had a hard time with subtitles growing up. You know, not growing up, but like, for a while. Then I kind of got used to them. It's, it just takes a bit for you to train your eye to read uh, subtitles. But once you do, it becomes like second nature. Like, uh, I've watched many, many subtitle movies. Being like a parasite. Check out Parasite. And like, like I said, you, you don't even notice you're reading anymore. Martial arts movies like uh, Ung Bak. Ung Bak. There's a scene in Ung Bak actually where you're, uh, the guy shifts to English. You don't even realize it. And you're like, holy shit, he's speaking English. I didn't even realize. Because it's all in like, uh, I think Thai. In white Thai. It's uh, Tony Josh. Freaking shout out, by the way. But yeah, Inglorious Bastards is absolutely fantastic for a couple reasons. Brad Pitt is hilarious in it. Oh, that's another thing. Cut, cut. I almost forgot. Once upon a time. All right, cut. Uh, Brad Pitt's great in it. Christoph Waltz is great in it. Christoph Waltz is a great actor, though. I think Tarantino brings the best out of Christoph Waltz, honestly. Uh, there's a lot of people in that movie, too. But once again, uh, it took me a second to get used to the subtitles. Once you do, you're all right, though. And I just, I almost forgot this one, actually. I just realized, I'm like, oh yeah, when I met Brad Pitt and Glorious, I'm like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Also an amazing movie. Really well written. It's got one of the loves of my life in it. I think she's like number three, Margot Robbie. Like, she's Sharon Tate. And the end of that movie just made me laugh. Made me laugh. And I'm not gonna spoil this one. Go watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You'll know what I'm talking about. But the end of the movie is so good. <laughs> I've seen it a couple times now, and I'm like, that was so good. Because <laughs> they deserve it. They're little assholes. Uh, DiCaprio's great in it. Uh, Leo, or, uh, Brad Pitt's great in it. Uh, a little bit of controversy over that Bruce Lee scene with Bruce Lee and Brad Pitt, but I'm fine with it. Uh, yeah. So, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Kind of a crazy movie. There's a couple scenes with DiCaprio in that movie that are like, wow. It's just crazy. DiCaprio can act. I should almost do like a top 10 favorite DiCaprio movies. And like, why I hated him for a while. <coughs> Titanic. Ah. Freaking girls. Like, fangirls are piss me off too as well. Because they kill something for me and I can't watch it. Because it hurts so much. And I watched Titanic and I was like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Going to Kill Bill, the first one. The movie's amazing. Uh, just the stunt choreography and the fighting choreography is so good in that movie. Uh, it's so crazy with, uh, with that fight. With, uh, like the Crazy 88, I think they're called. So good. I love a good sword fight. I'm, I'm down. Move your big toe. Speaking of big toes, there's something about Tarantino and feet. <laughs> As if anybody knows Quentin Tarantino, he's kind of put feet in a lot of scenes in a lot of his movies. Fucking Tarantino. <laughs> but his movies are great. 
even though he's got a foot fetish. <laughs> so moving on to uh, the next one. Uh, the Hateful Eight. That was good. A little long-winded. Great score. Uh, great score. That movie's... Yeah, they got the guy won for score. Uh, Enrio was something. I think his name was... Uh, should have looked it up. I should have done my due diligence and did my research, but... I'm a lazy asshole. <laughs> Don't blame me. Don't at me. <laughs> yeah. Hateful Eight also got a great cast. Freaking... Uh, Kurt Russell's got a wicked beard. Wicked stash. He's wicked. Wicked hot. That's what I like to say. And the, the, the Boston accent. Boston. is wicked hot. Yeah, Hateful Eight was cool. I don't like the revelation in the beginning of the third act. I really didn't. I, I, I think it should have... Should have delayed a little longer before it got to that revelation. Once again, I don't want to give too much away. And I don't like Channing Tatum. I don't like Channing Tatum. Uh, he's always bothered me. He was funny and like, this is the end. And I do like those uh, 20, 20, 20, 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street. He is funny in that. But overall, I'm not a big Channing Tatum fan. Once again, fangirls killed it. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to hear about freaking Channing Tatum anymore. But yeah. Uh, moving on once again to uh, Kill Bill, Volume 2. I was working a midnight shift before I went to see this movie at theaters. And I was so, like, bored with this movie. I was like, uh, I'm tired and I'm cranky and I smoked a joint before I went in. And that's the thing, is you can't keep on smoking, so you're tired out by the time, like, halfway through the movie. You're like, uh, stupid movie. Nothing's happening in this movie. The movie's boring. And there's no good, no no big fight at the end between uh, the bride and Bill <coughs> that I wanted to see. Uh, it just kind of they talk. And that's what Tarantino does. I don't mind it. I don't mind good dialogue, but like I wanted to see it. Like there was a lot of build. The fucking movie's called Kill Bill, and all that build up to the end where Bill and the bride finally Beatrix Kiddo they finally meet each other and they're gonna scrap and they talk. For like 15 minutes, it goes on and on and on, and then she does that, and she kills him. I was like, "That's it!" Out of all that time, and we waited. That's it. <sighs> Kill Bill Volume Two bothers. I think he's doing a number three though, which is kind of cool. On volume Three, and uh, the last Death Proof. Death Proof is all right. It's all right. I might have to watch it again, but the other one was like the old Grindhouse thing. Planet Terror is so much better. Like, not even comparable. Rob Rodriguez does work with him quite a bit with Tarantino, which I'm going to give a shout out to a couple movies right after I'm done here. But Death Proof's alright. It's got a couple cool scenes in it. A couple of Zarya Dawson. She's a Sokotano. She's also in Clerks 2 and a lot of other movies. I love Rosario Dawson. I do. I do love Rosario Dawson. Uh, okay, so Death Proof, you know, that's my last favorite, but it's still right. It's not horrible, I wouldn't, but it just compared to his other movies. That's what they, it's hard to rank these, and everybody's got different opinions when it comes to Terrence, you know. Somebody might say Death Proof is their favorite. I never heard anybody say that, but somebody might say it. <laughs> but I do want to shout out a couple of the movies that he's written as well. I want to, because I know a lot of people haven't seen this one. True Romance with Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette. Oh, there's a lot of people in this movie that uh, Dennis Hopper and uh, Chris Walken again. That scene's amazing. Uh, uh, Bronson Pinchot, Belky from Perfect Rangers. It's my life, it's my dream. Nothing's gonna stop me now. Perfect Rangers was good back in the day. It's terrible now. Oh, God, it's awful. Awful, awful. Oh, yeah, shave my head again, as you guys can see. Been doing it for a while. Uh, I'm gonna get another shout out to uh, uh, Natural Born Killers, also phenomenal. What else is From Dust to Dawn? Great. These aren't movies that he directed, but like he's been a part of them in some way. From Dust to Dawn is probably my favorite vampire movie. It's like I go back and forth with that and Lost Boys, but yeah. I just wanted to give you a rundown. It's almost, it is 15 minutes actually. I did 15 minutes talking about Tarantino. Uh, but yeah, now I'm going to edit this and uh, hope you guys have all a good day. And uh, I'm actually going to start a Patreon very soon. 
hopefully I could get this channel off the ground. And like and subscribe. I'm going to try to figure out how to link all my socials as well. Because I got a Facebook group, Ty the Blockbuster Guy. Anyways, have a good one, guys. Peace.